some friends of mine decided to start a wedding business. Part of the business is photo and video. And so I helped them order a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna go through each item and sort of give my reasonings for why we decided to go with each thing and maybe help out whoever is out there that wants to maybe get their foot in the door of the wedding business. So let's do, let's do the smaller stuff first. Video light, I'll show that again in a bit. Video head, professional, emergency. This is actually for me. Oh, damn, this shit's heavy. Tripod, that thing is heavy. It might be a little too heavy. This one, flash. This is a kit of something. Oh, Zoom H1. Battery, hard drive, uh, another recorder. I think I bought this on accident because we're not supposed to have two. Some more batteries. XA30. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to start. We'll start with the tripod and the support gear and, and work our way up to the camera. And I'll kind of go through like my thought process of why I chose each thing and um, yeah so like i said my friends are starting a business they're going to offer both photo and video so it's my job to help figure out what's the essentials to get them off the ground and i decided to go with the newer carbon fiber and the reason is it's relatively cheap and it looks exactly like the zome brand on amazon which has really good ratings it looks really good aesthetically the tripod itself is, is fairly lightweight, but, but the head that came with it is a little bit on the heftier side. This one is more of a photo head, but it does pan, but you won't be able to tilt smoothly, which is why we also got a video head. The brand of this video head is called Kingjoy. The reason I got this head is because I'm pretty sure that it's a knockoff of the Manfrotto 701 H HDV. So there's fluid, there's balance. It feels smooth so far. It looks very similar to the Manfrotto. A lot of these Chinese off-brand parts, you'll see that the fit and finish isn't that good. And that's because they don't really have brand cachet. So they're making the product, um, a product that works, but it doesn't necessarily have any type of like quality assurance or final inspection. It's got all-terrain feet, which I don't particularly like. The good thing is that it has a quarter inch attachment so you can easily swap out for a different head. This tripod is actually supposed to be used for a slider and I think that it might be too small. This is the Cinovate Doozy and this is the slider that's gonna go on this tripod. The 3 8 uh, screw that they have has this nut on it. So you have to adjust yourself how deep you wanna plug up the hole. Very similar in design to this Gitzo 1542T. Even the carbon fiber looks similar. I thought it was more of a full size like this Manfrotto here with a Rhino slider. The important thing when you put a slider on a tripod, the more distance, the more stability. So with this particular tripod, this would most likely be the minimum height that you can use it. This head looks like a Manfrotto, but it doesn't work like a Manfrotto at all. Whereas the tilt is very smooth, the panning sucks really bad. <sighs> this professional head is going back. Sometimes when things don't go your way, you have to make do with what you have. One of my friends is flying overseas tomorrow. So all this stuff was ordered and shipped overnight so we could have it today so we could put it in the luggage. Generally speaking, for slider shots, the pan is a lot more important. We got a hard drive, four terabytes for a hard drive that doesn't need to be plugged in is pretty good. And it has really good ratings on Amazon. So hopefully this was a good choice. This is the Zoom H1, very popular and widely used. It's cheap and it works pretty well. This Olympus that I purchased works pretty well too. And I, I, I'm, the good thing about this is that it can fit inside a pocket and you can use it with a lav mic. You can also plug it into the soundboard and the DJ and record the sound that way. Generally speaking, we'll use something a little more advanced for recording through the soundboard. But for this project, we're trying to get our foot in the door without breaking the bank. It's gonna be the go-to device that's going to take care of all the audio work that we need for a wedding. Also in this kit, we have the H1 accessory pack. There's a little tabletop tripod thing, which I can tell you is going to be useless. I didn't know that this was included, but I guess the, this is a little come up. 
In summary, this is going to be the entire audio setup. One thing that I always tell everybody who's so obsessed with gears and cameras and things like that is that what you see is 50% of how you absorb the world and what you hear is also 50%. So audio is really important. In some ways, audio is more important than video. If you're on a budget and you have to make decisions, put priority on the audio stuff first. This flash comes with a receiver and a transmitter or, or is these transceivers? Well, it's a flash and it comes with a trigger kit. So that way, if you wanna do off-camera flash and maybe you wanna have an assistant just hold this thing or you wanna put on a light stand, you can pop the flash that way. This is obviously meant to be paired with a stills camera, which I was unable to get in time. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. Since we're talking about stills, I'm just gonna talk about the setup even though we don't have it. Um, we decided to go with a Canon 6D. Originally, I wanted to go with the ADD or 70D just to have that hybrid stills video work type of thing going. And we wanted to have a few of those just so both the video team and the photo team could basically use the same cameras. Full frame look, you know, there's a certain type of sharpness. You're able to blur out the background a lot more easier. And so ultimately, I decided to go with a 6D for the stills and a camcorder camcorder for the video instead of like a DSLR or a mirrorless style. And I'll tell you why. The set of lenses that I picked are sort of like the bare bones for what you would need for, for a wedding. 17 to 40 f4 and this is for mostly prep and and things in the morning where you're going to need that wide angle and you're going to be in tight rooms. Obviously, it's not a 16 to 35 2.8 but it doesn't cost anywhere near that. The other lens, the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4, the 50 is so versatile, you can use it in any way and still get really good results. And then for reception, ideally you'd have a 7200. I'm still debating about that. With the wide zoom and a 50 prime, you really can't go wrong. We have extra batteries for the video camera as well as, as, well as the video, oh, the video light. And the batteries th that we got were off brand obviously to save money. Sometimes off-brand batteries are a good choice. Sometimes you might wanna stay away from them. For stills work, I think off-brand batteries are, are okay. It's a really big bang for your buck, but you do have to be careful because I've used third-party batteries and once I did lose about 10 minutes worth of footage from a paid shoot. So this is a light from a company called Viltrox. Again, another Amazon company. It looks really sleek. It uses the FP, the NP F550, or it uses these batteries. It looks like it might do the job in a, in a pretty dark environment. The good thing is that it's not, this is going to be going on camera. I know you're going to think I'm, I'm blasphemous, but that's what it's going to be used for. You push in the knob and then you can choose your Kelvin. You also have a adapter, which I'm guessing is in this little thing. Mm -hmm. This doesn't come with an adapter. So I guess it's this battery all the way, but you can plug in a, an adapter in and I don't think it'll be that difficult to find an adapter. And this mount looks like they modified a GoPro mount or something, but it'll work. All right, so now we get to the main character of the show that I truly feel that the camera is the least important part of your... Honestly, if I had to choose between this only or all this and my iPhone, I would choose all this and my iPhone. I chose to go with the Canon XA30 for several reasons. The first being price. Ideally, if you were to get into wedding work, I would suggest getting a Sony A6000 series if you wanna shoot a cinematic style. For the market that we're getting into, we're okay with the more traditional route, which is why we're going with a camcorder. They don't care if you have a Sony A7S with some Zeiss lens shooting S-Log, grading it like a beast. They don't care about all that. This is an overseas market. This is not in the US. So that's the reason we decided to go with a camcorder. This camera is supposed to be super simple to use. I like how this handle is detachable because where we're bringing this, we're going to need to break everything down to make it look smaller because if it looks like we're bringing in a bunch of pro gear, which it kind of does look like, they might extort us at the airport. Okay, this is a lot smaller than I imagined, but okay, so with it rigged up like this, it, it, it might work, it, it might work. You've got the XLR inputs, which is good. What else do you have? You have, huh, not many buttons. Okay, well, that's what you have. The difference between the XA30 and the 35 is that the 35 has a HD SDI, which for what we're doing is overly unnecessary. Maybe if we get some kind of 
chest thing. <sighs> the A6500 shooting on 4K overheat and it stopped right before I put this thing on the glide cam. Basically what I was just saying, if you are in a US market, which most likely you are if you're watching this video, you may wanna go with something uh, that shoots more cinematic images like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So if you would like some tips, suggestions, or if you have any questions regarding this whole thing, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll help you out as best I can. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Cool, that's it. Thank you for watching. All right, a little, a little update. The tripod is going back. I'm returning it. It really sucks. Well, maybe it doesn't really suck. The camera unfortunately has to go back as well. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I can't rig it up to get it big enough to look professional. And I know it's stupid, but for what we need it for, for the market we need it for, it's not gonna work. Most likely we'll end up with something like a Panasonic UX90 or something or other. And even if we choose not to go with the 4K workflow, I think that we can still get a, um, a sharp 1080, uh, whatever. The point is the tripod's going back, the camera's going back as well. And the reason that I'm putting this update in at the end is because hopefully you guys watch the whole thing but know that a lot of the things that I talked about as far as starting your own business, creating income from wedding photography or wedding videography, I think a lot of that still applies. Basically 50% of the gear is being returned, but hopefully the video still has helped you out in some way.